Hey guys, welcome to another video. My name is Abby and this is Spend More Time in the Wild. Little Bobby is floating around somewhere as well, but we are here in my local woods and the best part, there is nobody anywhere. <laughs> so good. We are talking about kit today and specifically what I mean is kit that you might need for a hiking or a backpacking trip that involves an overnight stop. I'm gonna unpack this bag and we're gonna run through everything and hopefully answer all the questions you might have about what to pack and what are the main essentials for an overnight camping trip. Alrighty, so behind me is a whole load of stuff. This is everything I would take on an overnight camping trip. And to be completely honest with you, if I was gonna hike for five, six, seven days, the only thing I would add is more food. Otherwise it's a pretty extreme fast. <laughs> so we're gonna go through all of this stuff. And the main thing I want you to think about is not the actual gear that I'm using, not the product as such, but how it can be adapted to your budget, the climate and season as to which you're gonna be camping in, the amount of weight you want to be carrying. Your situation is individual and personal. Your hiking experience is gonna be different. What you're looking to get out of your hiking experience is going to be different. So I am gonna run through the different kit that I've got but adapt it to you and your situation. Let's get down to it. The nice thing about backpacking is you can break things down into systems. So we are gonna start on the outside as though we have camp pitched up and ready to go. And then we're going to gradually work our way back. So the first thing we need to start with is our shelter system. So there's all sorts of different systems that you could potentially use from a bivy to a tarp to a tent. And today, I have got as an example of a tent that I might use as a shelter system when I'm out and about on the trail is this dude. So this is the Terra Nova Laser Compact One. So as you can see, it's a pretty lightweight tent. Um, I keep it in a dry bag purely for added protection. Really packs down very nicely. And uh, this is a tent I would use in a summer season hiking trip. If it was winter, then I definitely want a different tent. Um, but if you're interested in different tent comparisons, then have a look on the channel. We've got different tent reviews. And also if you're interested in picking a backpacking tent, have a look at that video as well. There are so many different tents out there and it can seem a little overwhelming to know where to start. But to be honest, the main things to look for are the season rating, the weight, the number of people that fit in it, the design, whether tunnel or freestanding, or whether it pitches with the outer fly sheet first or the inner first. Boom! So that is our shelter system. Next up, we have our sleeping system. So sleeping system basically includes a roll mat, a sleeping bag, and for some people, perhaps some kind of pillow comfort thing. <laughs> so the sleeping pad that I use is this. This is the Thermarest Neo Air. Um, this is my second one of these because in the first actually on the Rob Roy Way, which I walked in 2019, the internal baffles broke. But it's a very popular sleeping mat. Uh, I really enjoy this mat. I don't keep it in its bag. I just, for simplicity's sake, roll it up and plonk it in my rucksack. Um, but yeah, it served me very well and this one's done several hundred miles, no problem. With regards to choosing a roll mat, I definitely recommend you head into a store and try one out for size. Check out how thick it is, how small it packs down, and of course, the weight of the roll mat as well. Next up is your sleeping bag. So this is what you're going to be sleeping in. Do you want a down or a synthetic sleeping bag? Do you want a sleeping bag or actually a sleeping quilt? So you just throw that over you. Um, do you want to have one that's sort of got a higher fill power so it's more insulating? Or do you want something that's much lighter and thinner because it's flipping hot all year round? I don't know, this is where it's dependent on your situation. But an example of a, a lighter weight um, or more compact sleeping bag that I might use in the summer season again um, is this one, which is the Elite 250. Again, Terra Nova um, sleeping bag, very affordable, which is what I quite like about these guys. You can see it really co compacts down. Um, it weighs just over 800 grams as well. Not that that's really that relevant right now. Uh, we're not talking about the specific specs of things, but there we go. Your sleeping bag, you wanna just have a think about basically the weight that you're carrying, the season that you're gonna be carrying it in, and the system that you actually want to use, whether it's a sleeping bag or a, um, a quilt system. The Elite 250 is a great compact mummy bag with a protective fabric to stop the zip from catching, an internal pocket, 
and draw cords around the face and the shoulders, something to look out for, regardless of the size or the brand of the bag that you're looking to buy. The sleeping bag I use the most is my Rab Neutrino 400, which has kept me warm and cosy throughout all seasons on almost all of my adventures. In this little snazzy dry bag, I have the final piece to our sleeping system. Now this is something new I've actually introduced to my pack. Uh, why? Because it's so little and actually it's kind of fun. So uh, we, we, we spent 2020, uh, the summer of 2020, um, working abroad in Germany and Austria and in Munich we found there's a massive outdoor store, so cool. I think it's Globe Trotters, had four layers, actually had a whole little swimming pool which you can paddle the canoes on, <laughs> had everything you could ever want. Honestly it was, a, it was a backpacker adventurer's dream and I loved it there and I, I just, it was hard to get out. Uh, but we purchased one of these which is a con a cocoon travel pillow so it's, it's so light obviously it packs down in this little stuff sag you can see it here um and it's it's it feels so nice so many of these pillows just feel really plasticky they're too big they're too small um they're crinkly and noisy but this one honestly it's just ridiculously light it, it feels like five feathers <laughs> uh, to be completely exact and you just blow it up and i absolutely love it so this pillow has it's come on a few trails already um, but not everybody likes a sleeping pillow before I had a sleeping pillow um, and I still also do this basically I would take a dry bag such as the yellow one there and I'll stuff the clothes that I was hiking in into that and I put that underneath my roll mat sort of just to, to lift up the roll mat a little bit and then that would be enough for me like I do quite like having some kind of raised up situation just because helps with blocked noses and things like that um, but that work perfectly fine so a sleeping pillow isn't for everybody but i honestly love this little thing and uh yeah can't recommend it enough <laughs> moving on from our sleeping system then we can start to talk about our cooking system or our stove setup or whatever you want to call it now i originally started with a jet boil a jet boil is a very very popular brand they have all sorts of different systems but essentially what it is is you have a gas canister and you screw your jet boil on and then you can boil water in it some people like to buy the pots and pans you can cook with it you can use it as a coffee filter all sorts of different things but in i think it was 2019 i switched across to soto so this is the soto river pot and here i've also got the soto amicus which is essentially a little stove that you tie onto the gas and then you can uh, whip up a brew you can boil water you can even cook in this pot if you really wanted to to be honest but it's so lightweight it's so nice and compact obviously i keep the gas in the pot as well and a lighter in there as well just to make sure i can actually ignite it um, you can buy the soto amicus with a igniter so you just press the button and then it creates a spark but i find those have been quite unreliable um, hence why i just carry a couple of lighters and that does the job for me so uh, that is my soto amicus and soto river pot i found the amicus to be very reliable and what i love about this setup is that it packs down so nicely the handles fold out and i've actually attached an elastic band so that it keeps the lid on when it's packed away as it doesn't clip in and therefore doesn't stay in place. Basically, whatever stove you end up going for, make sure it works for you. So again, if you're in colder environments, gas might not be the way to go. You might want some kind of liquid fuel, all sorts of different stoves. I'm not going into a stove comparison here, but essentially you want to think about your cooking system. And then up next is things like mugs. So obviously I've got to get it in here. Don't be afraid to purchase one of our Spend More Time in the World camping mugs. They're vintage style, so they're designed to look kind of like they've already been used on the trail um, in one way. <laughs> they, they're super cool. What I love about them is they're really, really light, um, and but they're just not the largest capacity. Uh, that is a standard camping mug size. But for somebody like me, who is a little bit of a teapot, uh, I transitioned to this Finesse City. It's 450 mils. It's a titanium mug. Um, it's sort of got the fold outable handles um, what's really nice about this if you have sort of just a standard flask sort of fits in there so I can carry it nice and easily in my rucksack uh, but basically you know a standard camping mug some people like camping mugs with a carabiner so you can just clip it onto something definitely definitely have a look at these guys on our store on the website um, but if you fancy trying to get your weight down something like a titanium mug is uh, is a really good option as for carrying water any kind of bottle will do some people prefer to use a water bladder. Just make sure you keep it separated from the rest of your kit in the event that it accidentally gets punctured. 
The thing is with your stove setup is everybody is different once again. So you don't need to go with Soto. You don't even need to go with Jetboil. Have a look at your situation. Gas might not be the way you want to go. You might want some kind of liquid fuel. Uh, you might love a good old traditional Trangia. So have a look at the different stove setups that you can get. Um, if you'd like to see a video from, from me, from Wild, uh, on stove setups and a comparison, pros and cons of different stove setups, give us a thumbs up. And uh, I think that this can lead us into food. <laughs> now, who doesn't love food? And trail, being on the trail is the best time to eat all the food. <laughs> so what you want to think about for an overnight trip is keeping yourself fueled. You need to be satiated because basically one of the biggest ways that morale can fall is being dehydrated and being hungry. So having enough food is, is a very personal thing. Um, sort of looking at what you'll take for a day hike and maybe just take a little bit extra, especially for just a single overnight trip. If you're taking something home, well, you've got snacks for the car drive home, hey? <laughs> but what you want to think about is, first of all, what are you going to eat in the day? So I have a plant-based diet. I, I, well, I live off a plant-based diet, which means predominantly, well, I don't eat meat and dairy. Um, so things that I have generally are plants. <laughs> But this can obviously be adapted. There's, there's not going to be any sausage, salami or cheese in my pack, but there might be in yours. So I've got some oat cakes here and sometimes I bring a little pot of a no nut butter that I can spread on those or avocado or whatever. I've got a little example of a trail mix. Generally, I make my own, but in here there's cashews, cranberries, coconut, yada yada, all the fancy things. I've got some pretzel balls, getting some salt in there, just replacing the, the salt that I'm losing through my sweat. And I have, oh man, I love these, um, basically a fruit bar. So it's date and cashew. So good. And I tell you what, I'm going to eat this on the walk home. <laughs> so that's what you want to eat in the day um, or finding what you want to eat in the day. And then you've got to think about evening meals. There's no right or wrong way of preparing an evening meal. If you enjoy cooking things up from raw ingredients, then go for it. But if not, ration packs are a great alternative. Dehydrated packs are lightweight and super easy to use. You simply add water. You could also use boil in a bag type meals, although these are much bulkier and heavier. There are so many different brands, so be sure to shop around. But of course, if you're on a tight budget, noodles, couscous and pasta have been a staple for hikers throughout the centuries. So don't neglect that as an option as well. The final sort of thing to think about is uh, essentially drinks. So I'm a tea drinker. So in here, I've just got some tea bags. Um, and sometimes if it's literally just an overnight trip, I will just carry in a little bit of milk. Um, I've got a little latte sachet for the morning. So that's coffee. And then this is also just a homemade porridge mix, just some oats in there, some sugar, coconut sugar. And uh, sometimes I'll put dried blueberries and things in there as well. So that's that's the sort of breakfast thing I've got going on. Now, this is obviously not a nutritional video. It's not a, even a trail foods video. I've got a few of those, have a look at them. Um, I just wanted to sort of basically highlight the things that you need to be thinking about for a single night camping trip, uh, which is your food for the day, your food for the evening and your food for the morning and the next day as well. And that is all in there. As with the main meals, you can also buy fancier breakfasts, such as high energy mooseies or porridges. Don't forget trail mix also works as a great fuel to start the day. Let's talk about clothes next. So clothing is a very personal thing. Whenever I hike, whenever I go on a hiking trip, pretty much up to like two and a half, three weeks, I will just wear the same clothes every single day, which is without changing it's, it's pretty much always these trousers my montane terra pants my spend more time in the world t-shirt you can get one of those on our store as well love these t-shirts they're just perfect for everything <laughs> um and then i'll wear obviously my boots and just a layer on top sometimes this sometimes something thinner or something something thicker um but i'm not going to talk about the specific clothing that you might need i'm just going to talk a little bit about the layering system if you'd like more information about the layering system then have a look at my layering video, which is going to pop up somewhere up here on a card. Um, but basically what I will carry, let's again start from the outside in, is waterproofs. So here I have got um, some waterproof trousers and a waterproof coat. During the cooler seasons, I largely use my mountain equipment Lohotsi jacket, in red of course. But when things get milder, I bring out my lighter waterproof, which is the Mammoth Mezo Light. And for trousers, I use the Burkhouse Pack Light, which are very compact and have good zips all the way up the side. 
Next up is an insulating layer. So I have multiple insulating layers. Generally I walk in some kind of soft shell, really lightweight soft shell like this thing. I don't know what this weighs, but it's stupidly light. <laughs> um, then I have my Patagonia Nano Puff. So it's synthetic insulation. Some people might want a down jacket. Um, I can't tell you how much I love this jacket. I think it's actually probably one of my favorite things I own ever. <laughs> um, it's made of recycled plastic. Um, and packs down really nicely, is really, really light, just very comfortable to wear, and also apparently needs a bit of a wash. But that is my Patagonia Nano jacket. Then in this dry bag, which stays in my rucksack, I have sort of emergency layers. So I have another insulating layer. So I have this, which is the Montaigne Alaise fleece. So again, really, really light. Um, and what I, what I love about this fleece is it packs down. I usually roll everything rather than fold um, and stuff it in here, but I sleep in this. So this is my, my generally my sleeping dry clothes. Um, and then the other things that I have in here are sleeping clothes. So sometimes I will take something like this to sleep in, which is a mountain equipment, I think ground up tea. Um, so I don't think it's cotton, but it's again, just stretchy and nice and orange. <laughs> Um, I, I have sleeping socks that I'll sleep in uh, just to sort of keep my feet uh, warm and protected. You lose most of your heat through your feet and your head at night especially, so that's that. I might, if I'm really spoiling myself, take a pair of underpants. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and then I sleep in these guys, and these are my Montaigne trousers. And what I really like about these, again, super light, super packable, and I often roll them up into shorts in the summer season when I'm hiking as well. The sun is coming out, which is really exciting, but I just want to recap everything we've covered because everything that's coming next is, they're finer details. You know, they're like the cherry on the tops, but they're all things that will be equally as relevant as all of the sort of macro nutrients to backpacking. So obviously we have, just to recap, our shelter system, our sleeping system, our clothing system, and our cooking system, and the bobby. <laughs> So up next then, let's just talk about all sorts of random things. I've got a first aid kit here. You can personalize a first aid kit um, like I do. In here is, is my very own first aid kit with sort of all sorts of medical treatment for myself or for somebody else I might find on the trail. Very, very, very passionate about not skimping on the first aid kit. I know with the ultralight trend, it is the thing to just be like, oh, bring some blister plasters and a bandana. But um, yeah, not, not ideal really because in the event of a of a first aid kit needing to come out. The whole point is essentially first aid is prolonging life. It's doing something good before the experts arrive and you need to be able to sustain yourself or somebody else before the experts arrive. And that's why I personalize that. And it, it, you know, it does pack down, it's not that bulky and I know that everything in there is gonna be super helpful and I can use it as well. Then I have got um, some extremities. So actually just to add this to the clothing to be fair, um, I keep things in bags just because it's easier to sort things. <laughs> um, just some gloves. Uh, so if I'm walking, I might want fingerless gloves or I've got some, some lightweight extremities gloves. These are the windstopper gloves there from actually extremities. And then a buff, love a good buff. Thanks to OS for this buff. It's a good buff. Also buff is a very fun word to say, buff. <laughs> Um, then the other things that I have got here are, for example, a wash kit. So again, wash kit's going to be completely personal. I keep mine in this little, again, bag. Uh, I don't know how many trips this bag has been on, but thank you. Travis Perkins. Uh, is that a building company? I don't even know. In my wash kit, I keep foot cream, which I put on every single night to just help prevent blisters and my feet to recover. I have toothpaste and toothbrush, super light, of course, and I have an air light towel which is awesome because it compacts down into this tiny packet. Here's some shampoo that my cousin made, which is environmentally sensitive. And purely for the sake of example, here's some wipes. Not that I've ever used them. In here, I've got some flip flops. Uh, to be fair, I only brought these in for conversation's sake, but some people like some kind of camp shoes. These are some flip flops. There we go. You can use those as camp shoes. Um, most people just yomp around in their boots. This uh, is what I rather glamorously call a poop kit. <laughs> so if you go to the toilet, you're going to need to make sure you take out anything um, that, that you use in the environment. So if you use tissues or whatever wipes, then you need to be able to pack them out. So I've just got some bags in here, um, some hand gel and obviously some tissues. Also just sun cream because, you know, optimism in the UK. <laughs> um, and actually sort of speaking of like random bits and bobs in there uh, for the wash kit. I do keep everything else in this sort of dry bag, which stays in the top of my rucksack. So that's where I keep my sleeping pillow. 
um, and just some sort of personal medication. But perhaps most relevant to talk about in here is this. So a head torch. Obviously, you're going to be out when it's dark and a head torch is going to help you see. <laughs> I use the Petzl Actic, which has three strong brightness settings, a red light for night vision and an SOS safety feature. With this head torch, you can also use a rechargeable battery, so it helps reduce battery waste as well. Last few things then to think about is, depending on where you're going, you might want to purify water. So you might just boil it in your stove, but you also might want to think about some kind of filtration system. So for me, I use the Sawyer Micro Squeeze. This is this little guy. So it screws on top of a bottle, you sort of squeeze the water through it, and then you've got filtered water coming out of the nozzle. You can also just, you know, drink out of it as well. So I've used this. A little bit, we used it, you know, on the Quantox and Exmoor, I've used it uh, on the Tour de Mont Blanc in France and Italy and Switzerland actually. Um, used it all sorts of different places and it's a good little tool to have. It doesn't weigh much to be honest and uh, sort of, why not? You also might want to use purification tablets, but the micro squeeze works for me. Next up is your navigation system. So some people swear by GPS's or maps on their phone. I think that's absolutely fine, but I am always going to be a fan of the map and the compass. Why? Because it's reliable and when you know how to use it, the only thing that can go wrong is this, your head space. <laughs> so I've just got a random map here and compass, you know, you can spend as much or as little on a compass as you want to. Main thing with the compass is just keeping it away from sort of electronics and uh, making sure it's sort of faces the right way. <laughs> so yeah, map and compass. If you're unsure how to use those, but you'd like to learn to use them, then doing something like a national navigations awards scheme thing, bronze, silver, gold, or mountain training event, um, training event, they'll have all sorts of different learnings and teachings to share with you. So uh, yeah, learn to use a map and compass, really helpful to have. Now something that could be a little bit, I don't know, controversial, it's a bit of an extreme word, but why not, is technology. So some people like to bring a Kindle, something to read, some people like to bring an actual book, but then we can talk about photography. So most people like to use things like these, phones. So phones are great, you can film, take pictures, document your experience. If you want to get a little bit more serious, you could bring a camera. Um, so I've just got one in a dry bag here, purely for conversation's sake. This is essentially electronics. Now most people go away to get away from electronics, but I thought I'd bring it in just in case. So here we go, just a little mirrorless camera here. And an M50 with a prime lens on it. So thinking about the technology you want to take. And then of course, spare battery for anything you want. And if you are going to use your phone and you need your phone, just making sure you've got a charger and a lead as well. I have a lot of different power banks of varying sizes, but RAV Power have proved to offer some great products. They're robust, packable, and not too bad on the weight front either. So the penultimate thing I want to talk about is walking poles and your boots. So obviously you're going to be in your hiking clothes. I don't really need to mention that, but you're going to want some kind of trail shoes, whether you're going for boots or whether you're going for trainers. And then the walking poles sort of come in there because the reason why I'm an advocate for boots, especially lightweight boots, <laughs> um, if you're not hiking in winter conditions, is because they soak up a lot of the impact, the sole, the thicker sole soaks up a lot of the impact that you have from carrying all of this, um, as do walking poles. Walking poles can really just help protect the longevity of your joints, in particular your knees, and they can transfer and take off, mitigate a lot of the weight on your joints and your knees. So a walking pole and walking boots are something you might want to consider for your trip as well. For the last three years, I've used the Salomon Authentic Gore-Tex boot but this has now been discontinued, so my hunt for a pair just as good is officially on. Equally, the pole I use is the Terra Nova Elite Trekking Pole, and you don't have to buy a pair. You can purchase a single pole, if that's more your style. I want to show you my magic trick. You see this? This is a pile of sticks. With one single pole, I can make this into a solid structure that can see me climb mountains, summit peaks, cross the rivers, <laughs> so we have all of this kit, it's colourful, it's good looking, it's uh, arguably quite expensive but it doesn't have to be. What are we going to do with it? Well, we have to carry it and that is where our trusty rucksack comes in. Your rucksack will almost become like a brand new organ <laughs> in your system. So this is my trusty Osprey Exos 48, so that means it's a 48 litre pack and anything sort of from 40 to 50 litres is going to serve you pretty well when you're out and about on the trail. 
there's an endless array of packs out there with all sorts of different features, sizes, seasons. The one thing I'd say is try before you buy. So there we go, guys. That is a whole load of information, <laughs> a whole load of colorful stuff. And what I really want to emphasize is this is my kit. As I said at the beginning, personalize it, adapt it. Have a think about all sorts of different stuff that you may or may not want to use. If you're anxious about getting out because oh, I've got too much stuff or oh, the pack's too heavy, talk to people. Don't be afraid to join our Patreon community. We have over 260 individuals all over the world who are hiking, doing amazing things. Some people that's a kilometer, others that's 100 kilometers, but everybody has their journey and everybody has different experiences and dreams as well. And I really hope that this video has helped to make them more accessible for you. If you did enjoy it, please do share it with others who are into hiking or getting into the hiking and outdoor scene. Don't forget to hit subscribe. And of course, until next time, enjoy your adventures. And from me and from Bobby, stay wild. We'll see you soon. <laughs> ninja Bob, Ninja Bob, does whatever a Ninja Bob does. Can he swing from a whip? No, he can't. He's a Ninja Bob. Look out. It's a Ninja Bob.